Do you like the new background? It's very legally Another? distinct. <laughs> Scarlet and Violet, truly the games of all time with no flaws whatsoever. This completely bug-free video game has also just released $30 DLC, which I decided to buy. Money well money, spent, enjoy money, the money game money. freak. With, hopefully, the final main update to the game being released, I think there's no better time than now to give my thoughts on the new Amons they released, including Wake and Nine Leaves. Now, there's only a few of them, but I'll attempt to go into a tiny bit more depth than my old video. However, really quickly, I just wanted to quickly go over my old list. Mainly just some minor changes to some mons that I've evolved opinions on. Starting with Quaquavel. I've grown to appreciate it a lot more, mainly thanks to his animations. The more I watch it, the more I realize... Damn. Broken move. Beat it. Flittle. I've realized this thing is ugly as hell. I get the idea that it's meant to be like a floating egg thing. And his evolution is completely fine, but since this is dummy from putting it in detail, I was way too nice to it, Jesus Christ. Poor Mart. The more I look at it, the more I realize how lame it is and how it's just a slightly more saturated version of its Evo. D tear. Iron Hands! I've grown to like it a bit more because my Raider bias has faded away. Kinda. Sorta. Is a B tier. Now, there's one more mod I need to discuss real fast. That would be... Flamigo. Apparently, people are called out the fact that it's called Flamigo, because we are in the Spanish region, and Amigo means friend. But also, the fact that Flamigo has a fighting type, because it's shaped like a boxing glove. F tier! <laughs> Alright, with that out of the way, Diplin is an apple. A syrupy apple. A worm in it, and that's about it. <laughs> it may be kind of simple, but I do like the foreshadowing of it having, you know, another worm at the bottom. <laughs> foreshadowing the horrors to come. And honestly, I think it just kind of looks funny, especially when it waddles around. Very cool mon. I like it. A solid A tier. <laughs> okay, but what if Sinus T was not pretty? Oh my god. Pulcha guys, a silly little tea thing making you some match of the possessed people. You know, normal Pokemon things. I think it's fine enough. I get it's based on Japanese cutlery or something. I, I don't really know. The fact that I don't care for Sinus Tea much kind of just transfers over to Poltergeist. Meh. C tier. How does this Evo fare then? Supposedly, Sinus Touch is based off a of match on Tea as well. The way. However, there are two major distinctions that I think set it apart. Mainly the fact that it has a funny little hat, which I like. And also, the animation for Magic Gods is kind of funny. It's a B tier. Now, let's move on to some of the big hitters now. The new legendaries of the region. Starting with the Loyal Free. A group of three very good and not suspicious Pokemon at all. Okie dokie. It is kind of funny. It sticks out its tongue whenever it's in battle. It's a jacked up dog. What do you want me to say about it? It's, it's kind of cool with the little neck thing it has, like a collar, I guess. Okay, C tier, let's just move on. Monkey Dory! I can at least express how much I dislike this one. I'm usually semi biased to Monkey Pokemon, kind of. But that doesn't stop this one from being really ugly. It's blue, and that makes me sad. Its stupid smirking face makes me want to punt it into the stratosphere. D tier. Fezandipity! It's a bird! The bird in question has supposedly been given this immense beauty thanks to the toxic chain it wears on its feathers, I guess. I don't really see the beauty, I'ma be completely honest. But honestly, the sort of derpy look it has kinda makes me like it a bit more, which just makes me think it deserves the B tier for that. But now for the main attraction, Ogapon! I just think it's kinda neat. I don't think she's completely peak, she seems made to be the sort of, oh look at the little baby, but god damn it is it kinda working on me. I just can't help but like her, look at her stupid face, it's so cute! The fact that she can don multiple masks, Holy that's crap, her gimmick, is also really geez. cool. It's like she was designed to be put into S tier. There she goes! No way! <laughs> we move on to part 2 of the DLC got two new evos to look into before everything else, which
to start with our Shaludon. The idea of the Raladon evolving almost immediately after Gen 8 is really funny, especially since his stats were already busted, and this thing is just the Raladon, but even better. It lights up as a suspension bridge in order to perform its signature move. That's actually kind of amazing. I think my main gripe with it is that it just looks kind of too goofy. People keep comparing it to a stapler, and they're not wrong. <laughs> Usually, I like mons that either look cool, or just have really stupid and goofy designs, which I really like as well. But this just goes down straight the middle, and I can't tell which is which. It's just so close to being S tier for me. But then I remember, oh yeah, I gotta take this thing to the hospital to get its back checks. I'm putting in A tier, moving on. Oh, but Hydrapple, Hydrapple. This might just be my favorite one of the entire DLC. Uh, let's see here. There's seven of them in one, with heavily different temperaments, and an RNG move that only works if they feel like it, which is actually amazing. Only five of the heads are visible at one time, which is like two of them to shuffle the entire apple forward. How do seven of them fit in this giant apple? The Pokedex calls them Syrupence, Serpence, Syrup Pence. The devs really wanted to make this one shine, and I think it works. Especially with the fact that its shiny form gets an addition of golden syrup bombs. That's just like an extra detail they didn't need to add, but that's really neat. And overall, I think this mod is great. S tier. Easy. There is one more thing I forgot about before we move on to the paradoxes. Oh, holera. Czy to Freddy Fazbear? What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, Walking Wake. Uh, uh, giant dinosaur thing, make me go yes. A tier. Raging Bolt. What kind of giraffe-based disease do you suffer from? It's like the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen. They turned Raikou into a giraffe, but I can't help but absolutely love it because it's so stupid. It, whenever it's in battle, his neck is off the screen. <laughs> Raikou got completely shafted, but like it turned into one of the stupidest designs I've ever seen from Pokemon. And that's the, what makes me want to put it in the S tier. Get in there, buddy. You deserve more. <laughs> Gorging fire. Gouging fire. First off, second name. Second, again, the extreme primal energy radiating off this creature. It's, it's great. It's just great. It's got the comically large headpiece. Part of its body is just a cloud. I, I, I don't know what else to say, but another S tier is on our hands. Literally, most of the Scarlet Paradoxes are like peak. Not you, though. Next up to the block from Fibers, Iron Leaves. My main problem with most of the Violet Paradox is that they don't really change much from their base versions, aside from a couple exceptions. Although, I do really like the color scheme of Iron Leaves, along with the fact that its giant ass head blades just sprout out whenever it attacks. It certainly makes Leaves and all the other sword legendaries stand out, and it's a solid B tier in my eyes. Iron Crown! I'm putting it in A tier because of its funny death animation, let's move on. Last but not least, Iron Boulder! I don't actually know about this one, honestly. I just think its color scheme is kind of lame. I know, just take some Terra coin, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm putting it in C tier, mainly because of the mighty cleave move. It's doing a lot of the heavy lifting for it, I'm gonna be completely honest. Moving right along, we come across the final legendary of the entire DLC Terrapagos! I don't give a sh! Was anyone else just like extremely underwhelmed with this thing, or was that just me? Like, this was like hyped up to be a, the big, powerful mon of all time, and it's just a tiny turtle. <laughs> Whoa, it, it's so shiny now, and it's standing on an orb! Also, additional minus points, whenever you send out for an order battle, it just transforms into its battle ready form, does the attack, then has to re transform back into its tiny, stupid baby form. And then it does that every time you try to auto battle with it. I just wanted to rant about that because it's very annoying. I'm putting it in a C tier. Screw you, Terrapagos, you suck! Ugh, finally, the end is nigh. I can go home after this. Let's just talk about Petcherunt. It's a floating orb. What do you want me to say about. Ah! The inside form has another little guy in it. It's 
becoming the pit of the fruit, which, I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's shaped like a peach, which is kind of funny. It relies on mind control to make things do its bidding for him, which is shown off in the very short DLC epilogue. Why wasn't this just a part of the DLC instead of being an update? Whatever! I honestly just find the more trolley potential of it more funny than the actual Mon itself, mainly because it has access to Poison Puppeteer, which causes confusion whenever you poison someone, which is sick of the Shamoove is quite good at doing. I honestly think it's kind of neat to overall, and I'm willing to put it in a solid B tier. And that's all folks! This is the entire updated list for all the Mons in Scarlet and Violet. I had quite a good time just ranking all of them. It was kind of neat just seeing all the new designs, playing another Pokemon game after another three years. It's, it's all good time, even if the game's kind of a buggy, horrifying mess. I've got nothing else to say, really. I shall see you all in the next video. I swear to God, if they reveal another Pokemon Juniper Presents, I'm gonna lose it! <laughs>